what holds those atoms together when they become compounds. The atoms are held together by chemical bonds. Chemi all chemical bonds come from attractions between oppositely charged particles. But exactly how they work um, is a little bit different. But all atoms have positively charged protons and negatively charged electrons. And so that's where we get the attractions. We can classify chemical bonds into two groups, ionic or covalent. We'll talk about each of those. Ionic bonds are going to occur between metals and nonmetals. You're not going to see ionic bonds between two metals or between two nonmetals. It's always one and the other. These involve a transfer of electrons. So we learned that metals in chemical reactions tend to lose electrons and nonmetals tend to gain electrons. And so that's what's happening with an ionic bond. A metal loses one or more electrons and gives those to a nonmetal. And the result is we now have a positive ion and a negative ion and the opposite charges are attracted to each other. And that's what we call an ionic bond. If we look at an ionic compound in its solid phase, uh, we'll see that it's composed of a lattice, meaning a, a regular three-dimensional array of alternating cations and anions. So it might look something like this. Here we have sodium metal composed of atoms, chlorine gas composed of molecules. The neutral sodium atom will lose one electron. The chlorine atom will accept that electron forming a positive ion and a negative ion, and these guys are going to stick together like little magnets. And they're going to arrange themselves in a very particular way to maximize the attractions and minimize the repulsions. Covalent, as the prefix co suggests, co refers to sharing. Here we're sharing the electrons instead of transferring from one to another. Covalent bonds occur between two or more nonmetals. You can't have ionic bonds between two metals, I'm sorry, two nonmetals, because they're both going to form negative ions. And if they do that, they're not going to attract each other. And if you've just got those two nonmetals, they're going to have this argument about who has to be positive, and they're not going to get anywhere. And so they're going to decide to share the electrons instead. You have to forgive me, I like to personify atoms. Um, so we get sharing. And those covalently bound atoms compose a molecule. In the ionic compound, there is no specific molecule. Um, you could think, you know, a, a grain of table salt as being one giant molecule. It's just alternating cations and anions throughout the whole thing. Whereas covalent compounds have discrete molecules, like the water molecule. Um, so we call covalently bonded compounds molecular compounds because they have molecules. I'm just going to ignore that because I've decided I don't like that illustration. <laughs> Only this worth time talking about. 